What is U.S. Treasury bond market volatility? Move Index's recent huge surge telling us. It surges to 198, the most since the financial crisis of 2008. History repeats. Are we going to have another big move in the bond market? According to the bond market volatility index move, that might be what we are about to see. Stock market appears to be back to normal, boring mode. Before the liquidity event hit the panic button suddenly. Today we dive into the story of what the bond volatility is trying to tell us and why no one is talking about it. Where is the market actually going? After the Fed's balance sheet spiked higher since the start of this banking crisis. From my last video, you should remember why US GDP is going to decline year over year. Here is the data from Bloomberg to back up my claim. But it's also showing S&P 500 quarterly earnings will go up at the same time. Which one should you believe? I will explain it all right after this. Welcome back to the Audacious Money Witch channel where we talk about macroeconomy, stocks, bonds, and commodity markets. If you like any of these topics, you are intelligent, that's why you're here. And you know what to do, and push my button if you like what you see in today's video, because I can't push it from this side. The like button. This video is brought to you by my Patreon. If you're a good boy, go to patreon.com slash Cheryl to add more meaning into your life. If you play your cards right and completely submit like my good boys do, then I will take you under my wing author of best-selling books, Goddess Cheryl. My good boys always get rewarded handsomely. You are such a good boy. You like hearing that, don't you? Hmm. You want to get into the bookstore. You want it to be real. You want it to be true. You want to be my client, don't you? Here is my book, Rainbow Focus. It is available in the bookstore. Such an amazing read. This is my book, Born to Shine. Order your copy today. And here is my client Teddy Easy's book, Wicked Pussy Perfume. It is a femdom novel and it's about money, the stock market, and stockings. Such an amazing author with such incredible content. Order your copy today. This is my client's collaboration book, Adversity Equals Success. Such an amazing book with such incredible authors. Order your copy today. Schwab's $7 trillion empire built on low rates is cracking under the radar. Just like financial crisis in 2008. On the surface, Charles Schwab Corp being swept up in the worst U.S. banking crisis since 2008. Makes little sense. The firm, a half century mainstay in the brokerage industry, isn't overexposed to crypto like Silvergate Capital and Signature Bank, nor to startups and venture capital, which felled Silicon Valley Bank. Fewer than 20% of Schwab's depositors exceed the FDIC's $250,000 insurance cap, compared with about 90% at Silicon Valley Bank, and with 34 million accounts, a phalanx of financial advisors, and more than $7 trillion of assets across all of its businesses. It towers over regional institutions. Yes, the questions around Schwab won't go away. Rather, as the crisis drags on, 
investors are starting to unearth risks that have been hiding in plain sight. Unrealized losses on the West Lake. Texas-based firm's balance sheet. Loaded with long-dated bonds. Balloon to more than $29 billion last year. At the same time, higher interest rates are encouraging customers to move their cash out of certain accounts that underpin Schwab's business and bolster its bottom line. It's another indication that the Federal Reserve's rapid policy tightening caught the financial world flat-footed after decades of declining rates. Schwab's shares have lost more than a quarter of their value since March 8th. With some Wall Street analysts expecting earnings to suffer, CEO Walt Bittinger and the brokerage's founder and namesake, billionaire Charles Schwab, have said the firm is healthy and prepared to withstand the broader turmoil. Really? The business is misunderstood and it's misleading to focus on paper losses, which the company may never have to incur, they said last week in a statement. There would be a sufficient amount of liquidity right there to cover if 100% of our bank's deposits ran off, but Tinger told the Wall Street Journal in an interview published Thursday adding that the firm could borrow from the Federal Home Loan Bank and issue certificates of deposit to address any funding shortfall. Though a representative, Bettinger, declined to comment for this story, a Schwab spokesperson declined to comment beyond the Thursday statement. The broader crisis showed signs of easing on Monday after First Citizens Bank Shares Incorporated agreed to buy Silicon Valley Bank. Boeing shares of financial firms included Schwab. The stock is still down 42% from its peak in February 2022. Schwab is unusual among peers. It operates one of the largest U.S. banks grafted on to the biggest publicly traded brokerage. Both divisions are sensitive to interest rate fluctuations. Like Silicon Valley Bank, Schwab gobbled up longer dated bonds at low yields in 2020 and 2021. That meant paper losses mounted in a short period as the Fed began boosting rates to stamp out inflation. Three years ago, Schwab's main bank had no unrealized losses on long-term debt that it planned to hold until maturity. By last March, the firm had more than $5 billion of such paper losses, a figure that climbed to more than $13 billion at year end. The rules governing balance sheet moves are stringent. It means Schwab plans to hold more than $150 billion worth of debt to maturity with a weighted average yield of 1.74%. The lion's share of the securities, $114 billion at the end of 2022 won't mature for more than a decade. The benchmark 10-year Treasury yield now 3.5%. Why would people stay? Schwab's other headache from higher interest rates stems from cash. At the root of Schwab's income is idle client money. The firm sweeps cash deposits from brokerage accounts to its bank where it can reinvest in higher yielding products. 
The difference between what Schwab earns and what it pays out in interest to customers is its net interest income. Among the most important metrics for a bank, net interest income accounted for 51% of Schwab's total net revenue last year. Schwab's counting on inertia after a year of rapidly rising rates, there's greater incentive to avoid being stagnant with cash. While many money market funds are paying more than 4% interest, Schwab's sweep accounts offer just 0.45%. Though it's an open question just how much money customers could move away from its sweep vehicles. Schwab's management acknowledged this behavior picked up last year. As a result of rapidly increasing short-term interest rates in 2022, the company saw an increase in the pace at which clients moved certain cash balances into higher yielding alternatives. As these outflows have continued, they have outpaced excess cash on hand and cash generated by maturities and paydowns on our investment portfolios. In their statement, Bettinger and Schwab wrote that client deposits may move, but they are not leaving the firm. That sounds like they are trying to lie to themselves or to their shareholders. Who would want less and more risky returns? Analysts have been weighing these factors, lowering their price targets for Schwab shares in recent weeks. Just like Silicon Valley Bank, most banks were taking client cash and using it to buy long bonds. Now they are sitting on huge losses and facing massive outflow to money market funds. This will keep spreading as long as the rate is high or the inflation is higher. So companies must go on a diet. Trim the fat and cut extra weight that is toxic to its system. Mickey Mouse has left the metaverse. Walt Disney has eliminated its next generation storytelling and consumer experiences unit. The division that was developing metaverse strategies. According to people familiar with the situation, as part of a broader restructuring that is expected to reduce headcount by around 7,000 people across the company over the next two months. The division was tasked with finding ways to tell interactive stories in new technological formats using Disney's extensive library of intellectual property. At the time that the goal was to create an entirely new paradigm for how audience experience and engage with our stories. Plans for Disney's metaverse strategy remain sketchy a year after the division was created. Disney is under pressure from investors to make cuts to non-essential businesses. Last year, the company hired consultants from McKinsey and Corporation to help find cost-cutting opportunities a move that angered some top content executives. In February, Disney announced it would make $5.5 billion in cuts and cut about 7,000 jobs as part of a broader restructuring plan. Economic headwinds Stiff competition in streaming and dwindling revenues from cable TV and the cinematic box office have pressured many big media companies. You will find happiness engaging with real people in Disneyland. 
more than you will find in the metaverse. That's why I believe Disney is cutting the fat away from its junkie girlfriend. EPS growth from companies in S&P 500 will be from cost-cutting measures. Like Meta, keep firing more employees, which will drive an unemployment while the U.S. GDP decline is coming in months. You don't ever want to trade macro. You trade the charts in front of you because macro can change direction very fast or so slow you can't remain solvent. You are such a good boy for watching my video right till the end. Bye.